Hi everyone, uh, welcome to GATE uh, data science course. So this is our second lecture on counting. Uh, here in this lecture we will discuss factorials. In the last lecture we discussed rule of sum and product and like keep remembering all these so like always follow the lectures in this order because like we will be using all the concepts which we have learned so far uh, in the in the coming videos so like follow the order it will be really helpful so yeah what is factorial so factorial is defined to be this okay like you cannot like derive it factorial n is defined to be the product of all whole numbers up to n Okay, whole number is what? Uh, like uh, uh, numbers, oh, sorry, natural numbers uh, up to n. Okay, so starting from 1, 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 up to n, this is what n factorial is. So, factorial of a non negative integer. So, factorials are not defined for negative integers. We use the notion of factorial of negative integers, we will use that. Okay, later when I teach like binomial theorem and stuff like that, like we will use the notion of factorial of negative integers but that's not how factorial is defined we will just use it for sake but factorial by definition is only defined for positive integers and uh, the factorial of n is denoted by n factorial you write it like this or like this Some, sometimes you will see this notation also okay so you can write it like this factorial of n plus one so this symbol is also for factorial and like the exclamation mark is also for factorial so it's the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n as I told you and what is the motivation behind it why do we use it because it is used in arrangements okay in the coming few, few videos I will explain you what selection and arrangement means so for now like just know this thing key factorial came in picture when we wanted to count the number of ways to arrange things <coughs> and actually the number of ways to arrange n objects in a row is factorial so how do we prove it so firstly let's know like what arrangement is so let's say uh, yeah like like you had like school right like like you uh, went to prayers and there are 30 students in your class and generally there is an order in which students stand in a in prayer while doing prayers right Gen like I used to have that ascending order of height right so that like the student in the back can see so generally that is the order so this is what order is okay like people like love order okay that's why we have like like government everything like we want to have order okay otherwise like like uh, it's all chaos so if you have n objects put put up randomly uh, it's very difficult to derive insights out of it when we put them in some order ascending order or something it's easier to see certain properties of the data set for example if you want to uh, find the middle element which is called median right you have to arrange them in some uh, fashion right ascending order or descending order so this is called order like arranging elements in certain order uh, that is called an arrangement and what is uh, n factorial the number of all possible ways in which we can arrange n elements so for example if we have let's say four elements one two three four or let's take three only okay so let's say we have three elements so this is one order in which i am please i have pleased them this can be one order two one three uh, and then then you can have one three two then you can have three one two then you can have three two one okay and then you can have two three one so these are six possible orders in which I can arrange these are arrangements right uh, order is always arrangement so these are six possible ways in which I can arrange uh, three numbers so how did the formula for n factorial came in so we know that n factorial is the number of ways in which we can arrange n elements in a row so let's say uh, let's take the same example okay so for three elements we saw that there are six ways i'll just write them quickly here so for three elements we saw there are six possible ways okay now somebody like like now we will use the concept of recursion okay so now let's say i want to find all the number of ways in which i can arrange four integers in a row 
ओके सो नाउ आई हैव वन टू थ्री फोर ओके सो बाय डेफिनेशन दिस इज थ्री फैक्टोरियल वी नो दैट नंबर ऑफ वेज इन विच वी कैन अरेंज एन एलिमेंट्स एन रो इज एन फैक्टोरियल फॉर थ्री वी कैलकुलेटेड इट इज सिक्स सो दिस इज थ्री फैक्टोरियल विच इज सिक्स नाउ लेट से आई वॉन्ट टू अरेंज फोर एलिमेंट्स सो आई हैव फोर प्लेसेस टू फिल इन राइट जस्ट सी ओके For the first place, how many options do I have? I can have one here, I can have two here, I can have three here, and I can have four here. Rule of product, how? So my task is what? Starting point. My task is what? To find the number of ways in which I can arrange four numbers in a row. That is my task. I break it into two parts. First task T1, then T2. Rule of product, very simple. Okay. So first task is to fill the first place. Fill the first place, and uh, fill. So this this I'm talking about four right now. Okay, arranging four elements, and the next task is fill the remaining three places. Fill the remaining places. That's it. I have to do task T1 and T2. First, I will fill fill the first place, and then I will fill the second place. So it's the rule of product. How many options do I have to fill the first place? I can put any element from these four elements in the first place. So I have four options to fill the first place. In how many ways can I fill the remaining three places? That is by definition three factorial, right? So for the remaining three places, what do I have to do? I just have to arrange three elements in three places. So uh, we already did that. This is three factorial. So for four, uh, four elements. So the by definition we told this previously. Ki the number of ways to arrange four elements in a row is four factorial. So we proved that four factorial will be what? Four times three factorial. In a similar way, we can prove that for any n, the factorial of n will be what? N times n minus one factorial. Okay, so this is the recursive equation for factorials. For any number n, the factorial of n is what? N times n minus one factorial. So and like you know, when, when, when when talking about recursions, we have a base case, so we can always have a base case. Let's say one. What is the number of ways to arrange one object in a row? One. Okay, you just have to write that object in that place. So one factorial will be one. This is your base case. So that way you can now compute any numbers factorial, right? So yeah, this is how it is defined. So let's see a few examples. Uh, so also like try to memorize a few factorials. Sometimes it speeds up your calculation. Uh, anyways, when you do lot of problems in counting, okay, trust me, you will tend to remember at least factorials up to five or six. Okay, so five factorial is one twenty, seven twenty, and uh, I remember it up to ten. Okay, so seven, eight, nine, ten. But it, you you won't need it. But trust me, when you do like lot of math, you will tend to remember factorials. In gate, you will be given a calculator. But that is dummy. Okay, trust me. Uh, in three hours, you won't be using it. They don't ask you heavy mathematical questions at all. Okay, even in counting, if they ask questions, it will you it will be faster when you solve it by hand because you will have to go to the UI. Okay, and then like click on numbers. It will be like taking up a lot of time. So uh, it's easier like do practice like without calculator first. If it is like too math heavy, like use calculator. Uh, otherwise, not. So yeah, so just remember a few factorials. So one is one, two is two, three is six, uh, four is twenty-four, five is one twenty, six is seven twenty, uh, seven is five zero eight zero. You won't need after six generally. Uh, most of the questions will be so. Like why I'm telling you this? Most of the questions will be arranging six objects, or like let's say you want to count the number of arrangements of words or something. Most of them will be six or seven words. So otherwise, like uh, you can have eight is four zero three two zero, and nine is three six two eight eight zero. Okay. So like try to rem rem uh, memorize a few of them. So the next question is. Uh, uh you have to find the number of factors remember we have learned this in the last lecture how do we count the number of factors so in this question you have to find count the number of factors of 10 factorial and the uh, most the key to find the number of factors was what to do a uh, prime factorization right so in factorial remember like don't calculate this the entire number and do the prime factorization don't do that uh 
it will take a lot of time because 10 factorial will be 3628800 doing its prime factorization will take 2 3 minutes don't do it that way use the property of factorial you we know the definition of 10 factorial right what it is it is the product of all natural numbers up to 10 right so try to write like prime factorization is what remember expressing the number as power of its prime factors right so what are the prime numbers less than 10 see 10 factorial is what 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 4 5 into up to 10 right so what prime numbers might come 13 cannot come right because 13 is greater than 10 in this entire factorial 13 can never come the only prime numbers which will come is 2 3 5 and 7 in 10 factorial we will have these prime numbers we cannot have 11 13 17 right we will only have prime numbers less than 10 now we need to calculate their powers so just calculate their powers okay it's easy so just see how many times 2 is coming so 2 will come in 2 okay just go with every number so 10 is 10 factorial is what 1 into 2 into 3 3 has come once into 4 4 is what 2 twice okay then 5 6 6 is what 2 into 3 7 is what 7 8 is what 2 cube and then 9 9 is what 3 square and then 10 10 is what 2 into 5 this is what uh, prime factorization of 10 factorial is okay right like simple so it is what 2 to the power 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 3 to the power 4 5 to the power 2 7 to the power 1 now it's easy you just like what is the number of factors never memorize the formula i told you like if you do if you forget the formula you can derive it straight away number of factors how will you do it you have how many options for 2 8 plus 1 9 because you can take 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, up to 2 to the power 8. You have 9 options for 2, you have 5 options for 3, you have 3 options for 5, you have 2 options for 7. That is your answer. Okay, it will be 270. And now, again, very interesting problem. Okay, like when, when I tell you it's an interesting problem, try to pause the video and think about it on your own. And uh, then try to see the solution, okay? It will like help you a lot. So, trust me, like it's not about just seeing the lectures and... Uh, solving the problems like while seeing the lecture uh, i used to do this like use this strategy always pause on the problem first and uh, try to solve it on your own <coughs> and if you spend 30 minutes on a problem it will be more beneficial okay then just watching a one minute video and you like seeing the solution because when you spend those 30 minutes you will know all the wrong ways to solve the problem and that will save a lot of time later in the exam cool <coughs> Very interesting problem. What is the number of zeros at the end of 100 factorial? It is an aptitude question. It has been asked before. I guess in JE means. Okay, and it can definitely be asked in uh, gate as well. It's an aptitude question. And uh, it comes under counting. So, like, 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 uh, okay, I'll, I'll give you the solution now. So, what, uh, think about it. Okay, 100 factorial will be a very, very huge number okay definitely you cannot calculate it okay even your calculator won't in the, the, in the portal so and it is specifically telling you need to find the number of zeros at the end see never this question will never come like this how many zeros are there because like see this is a number five zero four zero 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 okay there are three zeros at the end they, they will never ask you the total number of zeros this you cannot calculate for this you need to calculate the entire number but if you want to count the number of zeros at the end that's a very simpler problem okay how will i do that uh, so we, you can always write a number like this in this format 504 into 1000 whenever you want to count the number of zeros at the end just split the number okay uh, all before zeros and all after zeros so it is what 504 into 10 to the power 3 and this is the number of zeros at the end whatever the power of 10 is it is the number of zeros at the end of the number and what is this it is 504 into 2 cube into 5 cube see uh, 
द प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन ऑफ टेन इज टू इंटू फाइव यू कैन नेवर मेक ए जीरो अनलेस यू डोंट हैव ए टू और फाइव टू मेक ए जीरो एट द एंड यू नीड वन टू एंड वन फाइव एंड एवरी टू एंड एवरी फाइव विल मर्ज अप एंड मेक ए टेन एंड ए जीरो एट द एंड बेसिकली सी थिंक अबाउट इट यू हैव वेरी लार्ज प्राइम फैक्टराइजेशन लेट से टू टू दावर सेवन इंटू थ्री टू दावर थर्टीन into 5 to the power let's say 4 into 7 to the power 100 into whatever blah 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 whatever prime number you can have okay very large prime numbers the capability of making 10 is only for uh, like only 2 and 5 have the capability of making a zero at the end right because the prime factorization of 10 is 2 into 5 no other prime number can make a 10 or a zero at the end so here in this whatever number this is how many zeros will you have at the end see 2 has capability of making 7 tens 5 we have 4 fives so you can at max make 4 tens you use 4 of these fives and 4 of the twos so whatever is the minimum of 2 and 5 whatever is the minimum of the power of 2 or 5 that will be the number of zeros at the end so that's a formula i'm giving you now a trick the number of zeros at the end of any number you just do prime factorization of the number the minimum of the power of 2 and 5 Will be the number of zeros at the end. So in this number, there will be five, four zeros at the end, right? So now the problem becomes simpler, right? You just need to calculate the minimum of the power of two and five in hundred factorial. <coughs> Sorry. So again, the problem is not that simple. How will I calculate the power of two and the power of five in hundred factorial? Now see, in any n factorial, the power of five will be lesser than power of two, right? For example, when we see the this particular thing, five, the power of five was only the power of two was eight. You will have more twos, right? Two is a smaller prime number; it will divide lot of numbers. So the power of two will be anyways larger. You just need to calculate the power of five, because I told you the minimum of the power of two and five will be the number of zeros at the end. so the problem just boils down to what is the power of 5 in the prime factorization of 100 factorial again it's an interesting problem still see now what is 100 factorial if you like look close closely 1 into 2 into 3 i'm just writing a few numbers then you will have a 10 so where will you have 5 you will have 5 in all the multiples of 5 you will have 1 5 here You will have one five here in ten. You will have one five in fifteen. You will have one. Uh, you will have two fives in twenty five. I will come to two fives later. So basically, you will have at least one five in all multiples of five. And how many multiples of five will you have? Up to hundred. Hundred upon five. Simple, right? You will have twenty multiples of five in the in hundred factorial. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, up to hundred. You will have twenty multiples of five. They will have at least one one five. All of them will have at least one one five. So you have at least twenty fives. Now some of them have two fives as well. And what are those those numbers? Those can be represented like this: five square into something. So basically, all multiples of twenty five will have two fives, right? So twenty five will have two fives, fifty will have two fives, seventy five will have two fives, and hundred will have two fives. All the multiples of twenty five will have two fives. So we missed four fives. So twenty are for multiple of five, and four we missed. Where where in twenty five, fifty, seventy five, and hundred, and no number can have three fives. For for three fives to uh, for come for you to come, the number should be at least five cube, which is one twenty five. Since we are only going up to hundred factorial, you cannot have three five uh, three fives, right? So this will be the power of five twenty four. I hope you got it, and you can check. Like, take it as a homework. Try to calculate the power of two as well. Power of two will be much higher. Okay, you don't need to calculate the power of two. Always in such problems, calculate the power of five. That will be smaller, and that will be the number of zeros at the end. So the number of zeros at the end of hundred factor will becomes twenty four. Okay. So like now you can do it for any n factorial. It will not. So doing this problem without like uh, breaking it down like this is impossible. Okay. You just have to like think clearly. Okay, how can you make zero at the end? And uh, yeah, that's how you can do it. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot. This is about factorials. In the next lecture tomorrow, we will learn uh, permutations. Thanks.